What I'm gonna actually go through with you is um, a couple of concepts um, that relate to this exercise that you're currently doing. And some of you are gonna say, Mr. Wu, why didn't you show me this earlier? And the answer is, well, I actually wanted you to do it by hand before I showed you the technology way to do it. That's the first reason. The second reason is, this is not the last time you're gonna to need to do this. So this skill I'm about to teach you, you may be already past this in the exercise. You're like, oh, I don't need it today, but you will need it later on, okay? So, if you haven't opened Desmos already, please do that. And what I'd like you to have next to that is, um, if I'm not mistaken, in exercise 9D, question three has a bunch of data sets that they provide to you. And I ask you to do every second letter because I know it is laborious to do this by hand. Um, and if you have done that, your effort was not wasted. You'll see why in a second. But what I'm gonna show you right now is how to not do that by hand. Because obviously we often deal with data sets that are impractically large to deal with and that's what we have technology to help us with, okay? Now some of you may not be aware and that's why I'm gonna show you, you can use Desmos in much the same way as you can use Excel to put a graph which has plotted points on there for you, okay? So what I'd like you to do is, over here in the top left hand corner, just to make sure I've made this big enough, and I have, um, if you hit that plus icon, you almost never do this, you just start typing, right? But if you hit that plus icon, a menu comes up and you'll see one of the options says table, See that one? Go ahead and hit it for me. And what it will offer to you is the option to put down coordinates, essentially, which is what the question has provided to you, a set of Cartesian coordinates, X's and Y's. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the values here, and as you type them in, much like with your calculator when you're putting in single variable with frequency or double variable, it goes down the column rather than across. So what's the way I'm gonna do this? Um, the coordinates are 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, 4, etc. right? So I'm gonna go 0, press enter, and it goes down to the next x coordinate. So on your textbook, I'm reading all the x coordinates as I go along the list. Does that make sense? So I want you to follow with me as you do this. I think the next one is 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see if you just hit enter, it just goes up by 1 because it notices that's what you're probably doing. But then the next one is not 7. It's not even 8. Even though it puts in 7 automatically for you, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 9. Is that right? Did I get that right? It's a nine, right? Yep. So I put in nine there, so there's all my X's. And then I go over and do the same thing with the Y's. And I'm gonna ask you to cross check this for me because I'm just doing off my own tiny little screen. I think it's a three, two, four, three, two fives, and two sevens. Did I get that right? Am I reading it properly? Because you guys are, yep, okay, happy, right. So, what you can see now is, Desmos has just sort of popped all of those points on for you. You can just like zoom in and out and do whatever you like. Okay. Now, this is nice to see the data very quickly. You can see, obviously, rather than doing this by hand, it, oh, so much faster, right? But actually, there's something even more useful we can do here, which is, I think they ask you to do a rough line of best fit by eye, right? Okay, now just pens down and um, laps it down for a second because something I want to highlight for you that's really important. There is a classic wrong way to do a line of best fit, which often comes up, like you get asked, like how do you do a line of best fit? And students will often do this and it's a thing that's known not to do. So you guys know in multiple choice questions, you got like an A, B, C, D, right? What I'm about to show you is often what we call a distractor. It's a like plausible looking option that's deliberately wrong. We put it in there because we know a lot of people will pick it, even though it's incorrect. Let me see if I can do this for you just by doing it on the screenshot. A very common way to do a line of best fit is to say, well, let's just start where the data starts and end where the data ends, right? So it will look something like, I wonder if, will this work? Let me see, here we go. It will look something like this. You pop your rule up there. It starts at the first data point and it ends at the last data point. So you can put you know, a line across there and say, oh, look, Look at my straight line, that looks pretty good, right? And then you say, okay, I'm, um, I'm finished, right? Now, it doesn't look bad. Like, you could do worse than this, couldn't you, right? It's not bad as a line of best fit. However, there's a massive problem with it, right? If I start at the beginning and end at the end, what might create for me a terrible line of best fit? Anyone want to give me a thought? Yeah, Daniel, what do you reckon? If your first and last data points on which you are relying to do this happen to be outliers, like suppose we happen to have a data point up here. Maybe that was my startup, right? Well, your line of best fit is useless now, isn't it, okay? Now in this case, it's like not too bad, so we kind of got lucky, okay? But I can guarantee you, if you are provided with a data set and you draw a line of best fit from the first data point to the last one, they'll say, no, that's not a line of best fit. They'll deliberately craft the data, so that will give you a bad line of best fit, so you're like, well, that's a common error, 
Okay, so that's the first thing. Let's get rid of that, I don't need it anymore. So how do we do a good line of best fit? Well, even though you're only asked to do an informal one, I'm gonna help you do kind of like a, not perfect, but like a better than informal one, okay? We are not gonna go through the beginning or the end, but there is actually a single data point that's very important that you're gonna help me calculate that the line of best fit is always supposed to go through. It's not the beginning, it's not the end, it's right there in the middle. Now it's not exactly the middle, it's not the median, but it's the mean, okay? You've got a bunch of X values, and you've also got a bunch of Y values. I'd like you to help me work out what is the average of all of the X values. You can see there, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. There are eight X values, so you're gonna add them up, divide by eight, and then maybe at your table, someone else on the table, can you work out your average for your Y uh, data points? Get me an X, get me a Y, and then once you've got that, you can tell me, and then we're all going to plot it. So, can I get a show of hands who's gotten to the X mean? We've got one, I want to wait for a couple, two, three. Okay, Bas, what do you got? 3.75, that's what I calculated as well. So there's an X average and a Y average now. Thank you very much, Matthew, 4.5. Now, if you just go ahead and type in coordinates, just like you normally would, um, they will give you a point. And just because like, it's probably giving you a different color because Desmos will just cycle through the colors. But just to make it really obvious, let's call this the mean. So just tick the label box and it's there as mean. It's not an actual data point. Okay, so go ahead and put this on. Now, I said that the line of best fit is actually supposed to go through that point. So I want to now draw, like I want to sort of put my ruler against this and sort of move it around, right? Now what's great is you know enough coordinate geometry to know the exact equation of every line that goes through that point. Let me say that one more time. You know the form of the equation of the lines that go through that point. You don't know what the gradient is, but you know the point that it goes through. Which form of a straight line are you going to use? This is actually why we teach you them. They're, that's why they're useful. You don't know the gradient, but you do know the point. What's the form of a line that has those two? It's point gradient form, right? We know the point, we're gonna modify the gradient so it fits as best as we can. So, from memory, point gradient form is y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1, right? Well, there's your x1 and your y1 right there, so let's go ahead and say y minus y1 in this case is 4.5. It equals, now I don't know the gradient. The whole point is like I've got to try and put my ruler up against the page. We've got something better than the ruler, we've got Desmos, right? That gradient is unknown, so I'm just gonna call it M. And then here comes x minus, and the x1 you told me was 3.75, okay? Now, as usual, Desmos is prompting you, he's like, do you wanna add a slider for M? And it's like, yeah, we do, okay? Now, before we fiddle with it, right, it defaults to one. The slider defaults to go from negative 10 to 10. Now, just to make it easier for us, I'm gonna change that range. So if you go to this, this cog, the wheel up here, right, and say um, edit, you can see you can provide a range for M, right? We can put a lower bound and an upper bound. Now, I'd love you guys to tell me what might be reasonable numbers to choose for our upper and lower bounds. Let's think about the lower bound first. Negative 10's silly. Why is negative 10 never gonna be the gradient? of my line of best fit. Daniel. This is obviously going upwards, right? It's trending upwards. So negative 10 silly, negative five, actually nothing negative makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, zero there, right? On my lower boundary. Now for my upper boundary, well, you can see one actually doesn't do too bad a job, does it, right? But I don't know if it's best. Maybe I want something a little bit steeper than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two as my sort of upper bound there. And I think that's quite reasonable. Okay, so now what we can do is we can, with a bit more finesse and control, we can move where that is and we can say, well, which do you think is best, right? Uh, it's not a bad way to say, like, I roughly want the same number of points above the line as below. That's not always best, but that's not too bad. See how I've got four above and four below, okay? And you can keep on fiddling with that. I mean, if I went past there, you'd probably say, oh, like, I'm... I'm fitting these data points pretty well, but this last one over here, I've kind of missed that one. Does that make sense? So you fiddle with that. What value do you end up with? What value are you happy with? What do you think? 0 0.6 or so? Bit on the higher end? It starts to get a bit like iffy, right? But does that roughly make sense? 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So I just want you to note, you can use technology for plotting these points. It's often very helpful, especially when you've got a lot of data points. And then when you're doing this line of best fit, well, this is a much better way than just like whacking your ruler on there and just getting it roughly. Okay with that?